Today, we're very honored to have with us in our studios right here on New Greek Television, Oscar award-winning actress, Olympia Dukakis, best known for her roles in Steel Magnolias, Moonstruck, and many more diverse film, television, and theatrical roles. The Academy and Golden Globe award-winning actress was born and raised in Lowell, Massachusetts by Greek parents. As an extension of her career, Olympia Dukakis began executive producing in 2009 and is here with us today to discuss her latest work, Beneath the Olive Tree, a documentary that reveals the atrocities and the true life stories of the women caught up in Greece's tumultuous civil war in the mid-1940s. Joining her as well is her director and producer of Beneath the Olive Tree, Stavrula Tosca. Ladies, your real-life bubulinas. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations. I mean, a moving, emotional, long overdue documentary <laughs> about the, uh, you know, lives of these women. Um, congratulations. And I, I don't know where to begin, um, but let's begin with how the story came about into your hands and how you made it a reality. I think you have to take this one. And I'll just add in the end. But all of this happened because you initiated it because you passed on a book to me. I so maybe we can start with that. Well, I gave her a book. Stavrula is a friend of my daughter's mm -hmm. and she was writing television dramas and uh, she asked if I would read them, etc. And after I read a couple, they were good, the writing was good, but the subject, I thought, I don't understand why this vivacious woman is doing this. <laughs> this bubulina. Yeah, this <laughs> bubulina <laughs> doing these stories. And uh, so I, I asked her that. Uh, I said, why, I, "Tell me, why are you, why do you want to write these things?" Mm -hmm. And she immediately acknowledged it. Tears of field in her eyes, and and uh, so it popped into my head this book that I had read, that I had held on to, which were the translations of these women's writings. What's the book called? The, the book the was journals, Greek, the journals. No, the book was Greek Women in Resistance Greek by Lenny Fortuny, yeah, good. which See? was a translation of uh, I believe three of the original journals that the women had written, wow. and then Lenny Fortuny had gone around Greece for some time um, doing her own interviews, which she included in the book. But that was what you gave me that That's night. That's what I gave her. And yeah. Two weeks later, she was, uh, as I'm fond of saying, on fire. She was <laughs> like mm -hmm. impassioned. She. Yeah had a purpose in life she was. And dedicated five years, you both dedicated yeah. five years to this project. Well, and she it. has, yeah. I mean, I have to say. I, yeah. You ignited it, yeah. the mentor, the master. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, the it's friend, I think, a little more yeah. is accurate. Yeah, and so, and then she took off. And well, let's talk about this. I mean, it's the secret journals of women that were unfortunately uh, contained or rather put into camps. Uh, wrongfully imprisoned. Wrongfully and exiled, imprisoned, yeah. unjust, uh, uh, and tortured and, and abused because of a belief, um, which, you know, f was a shock to me and many people when we saw this mm -hmm. documentary because we didn't know that this happened. Yeah. I mean, atrocities happened. At, you know, we're talking about, let's set the stage a little bit for our viewers. Uh, we're talking about uh, the post Civil War. Uh, civil War in Greece happened between 1946 and 1949. These are the, yeah, these are the official Civil War, Greek Civil War dates in the books. Uh, but there's a lot of historians who will argue, and anthropologists as well, that the Civil War had already began before the end of World War II in Greece. Yes, and unfortunately these women were caught up in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, even if they were associated, they had a friend or a relative that was involved with the resistance that was part of the Communist Party, they were considered enemies of the state at the time, uh, and uh, these horrible things happened to them. Tell us a little bit more about the research that was involved, uh, what steps you took to pull the story together. These women, how easy was it for them to tell their story? Um, it wasn't. Um, I'll take this one by one. Um, so uh, Olympia gives me the book. I start reading about these women, and I am in disbelief because I went to school in Greece, and I was you know, a pretty good student, and I knew my history and the facts, or I thought so at least. So I go back to her a couple of weeks later, and I'm, um, I'm on fire, but I'm also angry and furious um, um, because I realize how 
ignorant I've been my whole adult life up to that point. Um, the fact that we're not taught what actually happened in schools. And I can understand to a certain degree the reasons behind that. Uh, but I also, there was a part of me that felt ashamed for not having thought about this earlier and investigated myself. So that was the first, um, um, the first feelings, the first, you know, um, in the beginning. Um, and then I went on to do a lot of um, search on the internet, a lot of um, research online, and I came to find out that there had been a lot of um, historians, anthropologists, even psychologists or psychiatrists who have written books, non-Greeks, and they have written books about what happened in Greece during World War II and the Civil War and that how these events affected generations to come up until this point. Thank God for the witnesses. Uh, yeah, and I was incredibly surprised that it was um, um, uh, professors from Germany and Italy and the U.S. were writing about this. And I was like, well, where are the Greek people writing about this part of history? So I came across a book called Dangerous Citizens by Nanny Panurya. Uh, which talks about the persecution of the left uh, and what these women and men went through at the time. And uh, that set me off on a whole journey of uh, going to the Tsakopoulos Hellenic Collection in Sacramento to do more research, uh, picking up the phone and just asking questions to people who are much older than me back home, including my mother, including my own family members, and trying to find out what is it that they're not telling us. Um, so th Why wasn't it in the history books? And yes. That, that's the yes. bigger question. Absolutely, because growing up in Greece and going to high school, um, all I knew is that um, the wo World War II ended, uh, and with Churchill's and the U.S.'s help, you know, they put the communists away, so then the Civil War came to an end because we put the bad people away, and we went on to live happily ever after, which is so far from the truth. And through this research, you uncovered that perhaps your parents had lived through something similar and you uncovered that they did. And it yeah. was closer to home than you even would have imagined. I, I, when that happened, and I remember the first time, I didn't want to tell you this over the phone, so I remember setting up a meeting with Olympia and telling her, do you have any idea what I'm discovering about my family? Um, my mom was the first person that I started um, asking questions because doing the math, I, she was, an eight or nine year old girl at the time of the Civil War. So thinking of myself as an eight year old girl, I'm like, I remember pretty much everything that happened in my life from that point on. So her resistance to talk to me and always rushing to get off the phone when I would ask these questions got me even more suspicious and even more persistent to keep asking. Um, Long story short, after a few months of back and forth, I came to discover that pretty much every member of my mother's family had been involved in the Civil War. Um, and I don't want to say too much about the film, I don't want to give it away, but that's part of my journey, going back to Greece to meet these women and try to convince them to tell me their stories, while all the while trying to convince my own mother to reveal to me what was happening, what had happened yeah. within our family. And there were things. Yeah. There were things. There they were, were things. and they were yeah. uncovered yeah. and yeah. Yeah. it was they amazing shared. to me. I couldn't I mean, how did it happen? I just handed her a book and her yeah. whole family history opened up. Yeah. After reading this book, how, how did you feel about this story? Because you're a Greek from Lowell, Massachusetts. You're mm -hmm. born and raised as a Greek American. Did you believe that these things were possible in your homeland, your parents' homeland? Oh, of course. I uh, I've reached a point where I can believe, <laughs> unfortunately, some of the worst things about us as human beings. But um, I wanted years ago to do this myself, and I prevailed upon her to let me do it. And there was somebody, some other company, some group from Europe, I think, who wanted it, and I talked her out of it, and then I didn't do anything. And it always weighed on my mind that I didn't do anything. And so when this came up, you know, I felt really, uh, I felt really that uh, I, it, was a, it was a promise I had made a long time ago. So I was glad that. Uh, it's a story that had to be told. Yeah. Now, I'm none of my family. My mother comes from Mani. My father actually came from Anatolia, his father from Crete, his mother from. Mithilini. How did they end up in Lowell, Massachusetts? How did they end up in Lowell, Massachusetts? It was the mills. The mills brought all the immigrants in, and uh, they went there and they worked. 
in unbelievable, horrible conditions, et cetera, et cetera. Another story that might need to be told. <laughs> the I story actually of the did. Screen. You know what? I have those books. They were written about how women actually started the union movement mm -hmm. in the United States. I mean, I'm going to hold you to that in right here on camera. Century. I think that's your next project. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I never thought. Another Are you one of for you? <laughs> the union movement. I mean, it was the women who were out there. Let's write that down. Every yes. Yes. Sally Fields. You're not at the show you know yet. That? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, Sally Fields was the mm -hmm. one that was. Like, well, I think you yeah. need to gather up all your friends from Hollywood and yeah, try to make friends this happen. From Hollywood. <laughs> Sally Fields, yourself. I mean, you have had such an extensive career. I mean, you were so fortunate. Uh, Tell That's us, right, tell fortunate. Us, you were fortunate, but you had the talent. How did your parents feel when you wanted to become an actress? Uh, you know, my father was very unusual for a Greek father of those days. He said uh, to me, everyone must choose their own happiness. That's wonderful. Never, you know, whatever, whatever I felt was the direction I wanted to go. Yeah. He, he didn't support it. <clears throat> he didn't, I knew he didn't want me to, but he also knew that it was my, we had this discussion once about, um, uh, what was his name, the, the one who went to uh, Crete, uh, Thesis, I think his name was, Okay. and he went there and he came back and uh, he ended up um, marrying Fedra and, oh. and all of that, you know, that, that when he wanted to go as part of the the Greeks owed the Cretans so many young men because they, they, they had lost a war or something, and they had to pay them off every, I don't know how many years, with young men to go down there. And uh, he said, uh, his father said, you don't have to go. I'm the king and blah, blah, blah. And he said to his father, you cannot deny me my destiny. I'll never forget that because my, I thought that's all I could, I never got any children's books. My father just would hand me all these Greek things. Well, that's amazing. And so, so this thing about you cannot deny me my destiny. And uh, I remember when the first theater I was part of starting in Boston, my father came and he saw us while we were building up this and that and putting the seats in and doing everything. And he stood there and the tears filled up in his eyes. He said, I worked hard so you wouldn't have to do this. And mm. I turned to him and I said, you cannot deny me my destiny. And he just, he just nodded his head. He was like, That's wonderful. he was pretty terrific that way, my father. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure proud after this lengthy, wonderful, amazing career. Yeah, well, I, I wish that he had lived to see me get the, uh, the award, but my mother did. And, and now executive producing, what do you like best? What was the hardest part of doing this uh, documentary? Well, she loved have to answer that. Uh, um, I would have to say fundraising. I was going to say that yeah, too. But yeah, I'm and you, she just moved earth and anything well, that I she could do and rocks. Well, I made for all because yeah, she... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not only f um, um, uh, fundraising in terms of, you know, getting support from people financially, but also um, speaking to a lot of people at the time, especially in the Greek-American community, and me being a first-time filmmaker, um, and also naive enough to think that, of course, why would, they want, why would they not want to support a project like this? And hearing, you know, a lot of doors closing and people constantly saying, oh, why do you bother with this? Nobody wants to know about this. And well, if you're going to tell and this... they were communists. Yeah. That was the thing. They were But communists. also, it was the politics, but also it's just something that's in our culture. And I saw that within my own family, um, don't, um, don't scratch old wounds or, you know, that's all in the past. There's no reason to talk about it. That's the Greek um, way. The yeah. Older generation yeah. Greek way. But, but also, Yana, a lot of people who said to me, well, if you want to tell, talk about the civil war and the people in the concentration camps, talk about the men. Who wants to know about the women anyway? That was the And who thing. was saying this, ma'am? A lot of, um, lot yeah, of mostly people. men. A lot of people. Mostly men. But I've heard that plenty of times, and I realized that, okay, I just have to, you know. Going uh, back to the <laughs> story, I do want to mention that um, these women, uh, you know, have uh, create their story. They were so humble. Yeah. Despite all of the atrocities that were imposed on them and their life was stripped, is, you know, they were st stripped of their life and their young, their, their young adult years. Um, and some women older with their families. And it was just a, I feel that um, 
more needs to be done, and I think that what you're doing is amazing by informing people. I think that's the first step of informing people of these atrocities. And the fact that these women opened up their hearts to her, to you, yeah. is very, it's very difficult to do that, especially for women who are so injured and they don't want society to know. And, and so suspicious. And suspicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so for me, it was about when I discovered about them and I told um, Zozo Petropouli, the, the president of the women. Uh, political exiles of the Greek Civil War. Um, we spoke on the phone and I said to her that I'm going to get on a plane and come out there and join them for that trip to Trickery. She said to me, well, you can come. Uh, we don't allow you to have the camera on or anything like that because in the past people have taken the stories and really twisted the facts. Oh. And Absolutely, yeah. So they learned to, you know, it themselves. happens once and then you're done. So they all had this agreement um, amongst them that this, they're not going to allow that to happen again. So I went to Trickery with the camera and everything in my bag. Um, and I remember um, just sharing with them the first couple of days we were there, um, sharing them with them my own personal story and my struggle to get my own mother to open up and talk to me about it. And why, as a young woman, I mean, they really put me under the microscope. I had to answer questions. Why do I care about it? Why do I want to do this now? What do I all ultimately want to do. It helped a lot to uh, throw Olympia's name around every other second and say that I have her support and she's the woman behind all this who started all this because a lot of them were actually big fans of Olympia. Mm -hmm. So um, when you, once you spend like a few hours or a day or two on a small island with a bunch of women, you know, before you know it, the word spread around. So once we got one of the women to start talking in front of camera, Everybody, wanted everybody to wanted to talk. And for a lot of them, I believe I mentioned this to you recently, um, when this documentary comes out in Greece, it's going to be the first time that their children and grandchildren hear about these stories. Have they seen uh, the documentary yet? Not yet. No. Um, uh, we're taking it to Greece probably early in 2016. Uh, but right now we're still doing the festivals around the U.S. and other um, in Asia and Europe. And you had some uh, very uh, prominent uh, guests speaking. Uh, on your uh, documentary. Uh, I must mention the Prime Minister of Greece, mm -hmm. the leader of uh, Syriza, the former Minister of Finance, Yanis Varoufakis, um, and a wonderful historian, Eleni Drivas, uh, and a lot of wonderful other people. And uh, they spoke wholeheartedly. Uh, do you believe, with this government in power now, that you <coughs> might be able uh, to help these women feel that they can get some retribution. I hope so. It's one of our goals. It's one of the things that we want to do with this film. Um, it was never the, uh, the intention to obviously put it out there and share their stories with the world. And it's been incredible to see how people who are non-Greeks respond to these yes. women and respond to this story and how moved they are, uh, truly moved by this. How but it was always- they think it is bravo. that the story be told. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but also in the back of our heads, it was always been, and Eleni Drivas is one of those people who were, is also a big advocate um, for that cause, to actually get these women some sort of recognition before it's too late because one of the things I want our viewers to understand, um, Jana, is the fact that the women who are still alive and were able to speak with us, they were teenagers back then. Everyone else from this generation has already passed away. Um, so this is really, I think, the last chance. And I hope one of the things that this, this film also does is for younger people to start asking questions. Because there hasn't been not one family that wasn't affected by the Civil War one way or another. Yeah. And it's so important for the younger generations to know more about this part of our history and in order to understand the present much better. Olivia, do you feel that um, this has brought you closer to Hellenism at all? Oh, I've always felt very close to my Hellenic roots. I don't necessarily haven't spent that much time in the Greek American communities, but in terms of, I I had the master of that, my father. He made sure that all the books I got and um, would engage uh, me and my brother in conversation. And uh, so one of the things I do is. Um, I go around teaching um, workshops, acting workshops in the Greek classics because I think American actors are eminently prepared to do them. It's just they don't know how to get into the play and what aspect of their process is 
really relevant and important. So since I've had the opportunity to play a number of these parts, um, I feel like I, I, I'd like to be able to make people feel that these could be wonderful, exciting experiences, not only for the audiences, but for the actors as well. What role haven't you played that yet that you would like to play? What role haven't I played? That Is there a role that you say, oh, I really want to... I missed that one? Well, I'm too old for some of them, so <laughs> I, I recognize that. And, uh, no, I can't say that I feel dissatisfied. I've done all of Chekhov several times. I've done the Greeks. I've done a lot of Williams and Miller. And, uh, Do you think acting is the same as it was? Has acting, methods of acting changed? Have the actors changed? It's the business. Has, the business keeps changing, and now the director is uh, very dominant, and the actor, rather than being a collaborator, is there to use their skills to fulfill the director's vision, I think is the uh, terminology that they use more and more. What message would you give to our viewers uh, today? Uh, a message? A message. I'm a, a, I would like, I believe our viewers watching you are uh, all fans. Everyone's your fan. I mean, the Greek community adores you. You represent Hellenism on the big screen. Every time your face gets on that screen. What would you like to tell them? I guess this reminds me of the very first time after the Academy Award I went and spoke to a group of parents, I think, at a Greek church, and they asked me a similar question, and I said to them to not be afraid to let their children go into the arts, mm -hmm. because the Greeks are very quick to encourage their kids to become doctors and lawyers and restaurant owners. How many restaurants are called Olympia, for heaven's sake? <laughs> All after you. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I think that 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 there's a wonderful, I mean, wonderful Greeks that we were just talking about, Dean Tavalaris, who did all of the Godfather films. Yes. <clears throat> he did all of those. And there are Greeks out there. There are many talented Yeah, Greeks, right? a, a lot of them changed their names, but you know what's happening now? I, They're going back to their name? People are not changing their names. Oh, they tried to get me to change my name when I came to New York. And, but I was like... <laughs> and your cousin, your cousin happens to be... Michael Dukakis. Michael Dukakis, yes, <laughs> right. So the Dukakis name is... Well, that's an easy name. Yeah. Galifianakis is not an easy name, no, and he no. kept it, right? But um, I do want to say that uh, you've done wonderful, wonderful uh, thing for Thank all you. of the Greeks really by telling has. this story. And Stavrula, we must also mention about Stavrula. This is her first project, correct? It is. I, I call and myself the accidental very filmmaker. That was going to school for me. Very yeah. impressive. Thank that, you. I mean, it's it's fantastic. And she has other projects going and uh, in two wonderful, great, strong women and other things that she's developing that are wonderful and. Mm -hmm. You're going to be seeing and hearing more from this young woman we, over here. We surely hope so. Thank you. So tell our viewers, Stavrula, where can they uh, be able to see this uh, documentary? Um, it's going to be online um, in 2016. Um, um, I expect it, if everything goes according to plan, around April or May of 2016. Until then, actually, um, I thought we were going to be ready with a film online uh, with a digital distribution by December. But because we've had so many festivals who wanted to reach out, that reached out and has asked us to maintain the exclusivity of the film, which is great. Um, um, yet yeah, um, it's going to be played next in Sacramento next week on November 17th at the um, California State University of Sacramento. After that, we're taking it to um, the Foil Film Festival in the UK, where the film is a finalist uh, for the best documentary. After that, we have the Santa Fe Film Festival in New Mexico um, and then India. Um, the Jaipur, Isn't that great? That's and amazing. Ireland, Ireland, Ireland is called the for foil. It, right? yeah, the Ireland, yeah. Ireland's calling. Ireland is calling, and even in India as well. The Jaipur International Film Festival. We we are a finalist for best documentary. The so story needs just, to be told. Yeah. Uh, and we need to take this to Greece also as soon as possible. It's a priority. It's a priority. I think it's it a should priority. premiere there. But for, for these women, more yes. than anything. Uh, beneath the olive tree, wonderful uh, stories. The journals of many women who endured uh, pain and 10 years of their lives uh, in these uh, concentration camps.
because that's what they really were. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, when the fascists came in, yes, they rearrested re them. They, uh, they, right they, during they the military dictatorship. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you call it military dictatorship. We hope that history we will at the time be called written it the fascists. The fascists. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We hope that you know history will be revealed to people and history will be rewritten the way it <clears throat> happened at some point. Um, we hope that these women will be recognized for all they endured and uh, we hope that and they found so much happiness in their lives which is it's empowering uh, it, for it, women who have endured is. similar things these women their heart and their soul and their bravery is an example to us all yeah. and they managed what we were talking about on our way here Olympia and I um, they managed not to lose um, their kindness and their spirit and their love for life to create and to go on living and to go on living being proud for what they had done and saying that I would do it all over again. Um, that's quite remarkable to me. Like to this day when I watch the film, it always, sure it always moves me. It's, a, it's coming out at a good time and yeah. Sabrula as a Greek, uh, what are your thoughts on the social unrest going on in Greece right now? Um, that it's tragic and just so extremely unfortunate. And I think that um, watching what's been happening since um, uh, Prime Minister Tsipras took over um, office in the last few months, um, I think that no one was really, none of us was fooling ourselves thinking that overnight or over a period of a couple of months things are going to change. Um, I really don't know from what is communicated to us in the media because there's always a bunch of information that's never we don't have access to um, as regular citizens. Um, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen with Greece. There's a lot of um, the powers that be obviously have a say but uh, it, it breaks my heart. I watch the news online every single day and all my families in Greece yeah. and my friends from back in the day. So Olympia, what are your thoughts on what's going on today? Well, I'm certainly, uh, I mean, I have a lot of feelings, but um, I'm in no position to analyze it. I would, uh, I, I have a lot of respect for Tsipras, uh, personally, I do. I mean, I like the man. I, I believe him. I think he wants and is trying to do the best. I think he's a bright man, a, a man with a conscience and a heart, and um Ah, uh, under terrible circumstances, I, I have to say. Yes, he's undertaken a yeah, very yeah, difficult I, task. I, and I'm thinking of all of those um, uh, people from the uh, Near East that have flooded into Europe. Mm -hmm. The immigrants. And that the Germans the have so welcomed yeah. and are supporting, etc. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if they could show that kind of generosity towards the Greeks. Yeah. You know, it's like a really interesting... And to the rest of Europe. Uh, yeah, it's a really interesting dilemma. It's an interesting am, dilemma. Yeah. It's a dilemma. Yeah. And we hope that one that will be, they can surpass. Better minds than mine will have to figure it out. Absolutely. Ladies, thank you so much. Congratulations. Beneath the Olive Tree, a documentary that you all must see. It will definitely change your lives. It definitely changed mine. Thank you. Congratulations, and please thank continue you. telling more stories. <laughs> thank you, Yana. Yeah, thank, thank you for, you for having us. Thank you for your interest and for your support. Thank you. Μέχρι τώρα, όταν ακούω ένα θόρυβο, ο νους μου πάει ότι κάποιος μπορεί να έρθει και να κάνει έρευνα ή να 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 μας πάρει πάλι. Αυτό δεν φεύγει πια. Αυτό είναι δεμένο φαίνεται με την ύπαρξή μας. Πώς τα κρατήσατε, πώς τα κρύψατε τα από τους χώρους. Τα κρύβαμε σε, ε, ε, σε τενεκέδες μέσα στο χώμα κάτω. Κρυβόμασταν, είχαμε τσίλες. Εμείς ανεβαίναμε πάνω στο αυτό, στο μοναστήριο που ήταν τα κελιά και εκεί μέσα αυτή που είχε το κελί μας το παραχωρούσε, έφευγε και καθόμασταν εμείς με τη ρόζα και με την λίζα την κότου και, γρα... και γρά. It's been over two months now that I've been asking my mom to tell me about her experiences during the civil war. She was nine at the time, and I know she remembers things, but she refuses to talk to me. In 1947, the British declared that they could not hold on to Greece anymore. 
That's when President Truman announced his famous doctrine by which the United States had to help Greece in their fight against communism. Αυτό που θέλουν οι Ηνωμένες Πολιτείες να πούν στον κόσμο είναι ότι εμείς είμαστε νικητές του φασισμού και εμείς είμαστε αυτοί που φέρνουν τη δημοκρατία. Αλλά η προπαγάνδα τους αυτή δεν μπορεί να σταθεί γιατί και τις μαζικές εκτελέσεις που στηρίζουν στην Ελλάδα και στρατόπεδα και υποστηρίζουν την κυβέρνηση της Αθήνας που έχει στρατόπεδα. Αυτοί οι άνθρωποι έχετε την εντύπωση ότι θα αφήσουν ποτέ να περάσει η ιστορία στα βιβλία Καθόταν πάνω στα πόδια μου, έτσι όπως είπα. Ο δεύτερος καθόταν στο κεφάλι μου και οι άλλοι δυο αλλάζανε χέρια με, ένα, με το βούρδουλα, με το γκλούψ. Αν έναν από αυτούς έβλεπα να βασανίζουν και ήταν στο χέρι μου να το εμποδίσω αυτό, θα το έκανα έστω και σε αυτούς τους ανθρώπους. Είναι φοβερό πράγμα. Να μην δείχνω μάλλον τις συνέπειες του πόνου, της, ε, όλων αυτών που τράξε. Νόμιζα ότι το κατάφερνα, ότι νόμιζα, δεν ξέρω αυτό, δεν το ξέρω πόσο, πόσο κρυβόμουν. If you want to know where the foundations of the current moment in history are, it's in the streets of Athens in 1944. Αφού καμιά φορά λέμε βρέ, παιδιά, θα κλείσουμε τα μάθη μας και δεν θα δούμε τίποτα. Και πάλι το διασκεδάζουμε. Πάλι το διασκεδάζουμε. Αχ, δεν.